newest member of the Indianapolis Colts, Jacob Eason. Thanks for joining the show, man. Absolutely. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, so what has the last 48 hours been like for you? Because we've seen your face and your girlfriend's face and your family's face all over <laughs> the television. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's been a whirlwind. You know, I, I uh, was sitting there yesterday, you know, expecting to get called, kind of kept winding down, winding down, and it wasn't happening. So, you know, I went to bed, I slept on it. I'm like, hey, you know, a big, another big, big day tomorrow. It's kind of the same way I went with the first round. So, you know, a little bit of frustration, a little bit of this and that, but, you know, you can use that as motivation and chip on the shoulder, whatever you want to call it. And, you know, I'm just really fortunate to have been picked up in the situation that I am. I don't think there's a better, there was a better situation out there for me. You know, I get to go in and learn from two great quarterbacks in Phillip and um, Jacoby. And, 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 you know, I'm very, you know, very fortunate for that. You know, I'm going to be in a great spot with a great organization and, and, you know, I'm just excited and hungry to get to work. Yeah. So, so what's it like? I mean, I talked to quarterback coaches in the league about you heading into the draft and some were like totally first round lock. And then obviously, See, that didn't happen. So for you, now that you've been drafted, is it, I wish I went top 15 where maybe I'd play right now? Or do you step back and say, actually, I, I got a kind of ideal scenario? Yeah, you know, I, I, I definitely did get an ideal scenario. You know, I, you know, I'd love to go first round. Yeah, I'd love to go second, third, whatever. But, you know, fourth round to the Indianapolis Colts, you know, it's a dream come true. If I went in the seventh round or sixth round, I'd be happy, you know. Um, I don't even think there is seven rounds. But, um you know, this, this whole thing, you know, it's been a lot of hard work. You know, my path has always been, you know, this way, that way, transferred back and, and two different schools and all that stuff. And so, you know, it's only right that I would, you know, dwindle down to the fourth round. And, you know, I'm very, very thankful, very humble. You know, I was just so excited. A lot of emotions kind of flooding in. I'm here with my family. and You know, my old man's, you know, super excited and, and my girlfriend and my parents. And it, it's just so awesome to to be here with those people and, and, you know, see my name on the big screen. And I don't, you know, it doesn't matter what round it's in. I'm, I'm just super fortunate and super excited. Yeah. I can't help it. I, I can think back to high school, you know, meeting you when you were 16 with the elite 11 and getting to know your dad a little bit. Mm-hmm. Curious what kind of type of guidance he's given you. Cause now this is like the third major, let's say change that you've gone through right? Georgia, then you dub and, and here we are. And I wonder what those conversations were like. You know, he's he's been there for me since as long as I can remember. You know, the reason I picked up a football was was because of him. You know, he was my hero, and I wanted to go play football and be a receiver at Notre Dame, and just like he was. And, you know, as I, I, as I grew up and I figured out I had a strong arm, he was the one working the mechanics. He was the one, you know, with the, with the mental aspect of it, being a tough player, tough physical guy, you know, not showing emotion, being a leader. And he's always been in my corner. He's always been my number one supporter, and it's been, you know, so awesome. That's why, you know, when my name got called, you know, that hug, that embracing him and, and my mom. And it was just so special, you know. It's, it's you know, one of those things I'll, I'll never forget because it's a culmination, you know, accumulation of, of just, you know, a lifelong, you know, 20, 20 years of just sacrifice, you know, hard work, sweat, blood, tears, all the above. And, and you know, to, to graduate high school as the number one guy and go and get hurt and transfer and then, you know, end up back to Washington in front of the home base. And now, I'm, you know, I'm in a great spot in Indianapolis. It's just, you know. It, you can never predict it. And, you know, I'm just super fortunate to be in the position that I am and have great folks around here with me. And, and uh, you know, I'm just super excited and happy. Yeah, we're so excited for you. If you go back to the time when you were the number one prospect in the nation in high school football, yeah. and if you knew what your path was going to be, what would you have told yourself back then? You know, I think I'd be telling myself the same thing I've been telling myself, you know, since it's all been happening, you know, it's control what you can control. And, and, you know, it's always just go compete. You know, I don't, didn't matter. I was, I was a freshman at Georgia. I was, I was competing and, and, you know, I was in a, in a tough spot where I had to go and, and compete with an older guy. And, and in that situation, I was able to go out and win that job. And, you know, the same, the next year I got hurt and, you know, the thing was control what you can control. You know, it's a football is an injury related game and, and, you know, it got taken away from me, but that didn't stop me from competing and, and trying to get better. And, you know, my goal has always been to, to declare for the draft and, and get selected by a team. And, you know, that's finally happened. And there's a lot, of, a lot of work left to be done and a lot left to prove. But, you know, up to this point, it's controlling what I can control. You know, I couldn't control getting drafted in the first three rounds. And it happened to me in the fourth. And for that, you know, I'm super excited and, and you know, just honored to, you know, that the Colts believed in me and, and wanted me to be their guy. And, and you know, and, and it feels great. So I'm just, you know, ready for this next chapter and this next challenge and ready to get down to Indianapolis. So did you think that this would be a place that you could land? And, and if so, what was the call like with Frank? Ryan yeah, you know, Indianapolis, you know, was, was the team that I felt I had the best connection with. You know, I talked to 
the head coach. I've talked to their their GM. I've talked to you know quarterback coach, OC, O line coach. Even you know I've had I think I've had more calls with them than any other team, and we developed a you know a, a great relationship because Coach Wright would always he would he would start it off by asking you know personal questions, whether it was family and uh, you know how I how I was raised, my college experience, and then he'd get into some like some psychological testing things and then and then we'd get into you know he'd teach me some a little snippet of protections or he'd teach me uh you know a concept and we'd watch my film and kind of plug it back and forth to see how you know how it compare and so you know we, we developed a really good uh, you know relationship in that sense so I'm, I'm super excited to get down there and get in with in person with him because i know it's gonna go great so um you know and, and this situation is, is perfect for me i think so i'm just you know very fortunate to have have been picked up and, and, and ready to go. I think it's so unique, you know, that you're drafted and you get to play behind someone that you grew up watching. Mm-hmm. I played against Philip Rivers, which shows how old both of us are. Right. But what, what do you think this is going to be like to sit in a room with a Hall of Famer? You know, it, th- that's, you know, one, something I've been thinking about and it's hard to, uh, you know, put it into words. Cause like you mentioned, like I grew up, like Philip Rivers is a future Hall quarterback and I'm watching him on Sundays as like a seven year old. So now I know I'm going to be in the same room and learn from him. You know, it's going to take a lot of growing up and maturity on my, on my end to go in there and, and really, you know, figure out how this professional, you know, this professional quarterback does it. So I think that'll be an awesome experience for me, you know, really go in and, you know, similar to the way I, when I came to Washington, I was able to learn a lot from Jake, you know, obviously this is a different situation and scenario with, with Philip Rivers, but um, you know, I think, I think it'll be tremendous for me. I think I'm going to be able to go in there and, you know, and, and, you know, get a great relationship with him and, learn from him I know you know from from what I've been told he's an awesome dude and an awesome character and on the field and in the locker room so I'm very excited to get down there and, and meet him and, and get rolling so you know overall just very fortunate very very excited and very happy we want to make sure we bring you back on our show after like a season because I want some tips on how he talks trash because Philip Absolutely. Rivers to do yeah. it incredibly well <laughs> uh, I've seen those I've seen those mic'd up Philip Rivers moments those are pretty funny uh, speaking of relationships, we had Jared Goff on our podcast mm-hmm. earlier this week, and he talked a lot about you and working mm-hmm. out with you. What, what have you learned from him entering this next phase of your career? You know, that's Jared, you know, I drew a lot of comparisons to Jared and myself when, you know, when Jared was going through this situation, you know, kind of the, the big, tall, skinny guy, rocking arm, uh, you know, personality, some similar traits here and there with, you know, a lot, you know, a lot of guys tagged him with the laid back kind of thing, but you know, so it's cool to kind of get like a piece of mind from his perspective on how he changed the narrative in that way. You know, now he goes on to go play in the Super Bowl and he's winning a lot of games with the Rams. So, you know, a lot of that was just me asking questions and, you know, getting information from a person who had gone through the same situation. Um, you know, that's that's one of the resources I was able to have down here in California, which was awesome for me. And you know, I'm very thankful, uh, you know, looking forward to, to going in and competing against Jared one day. So, um you know, the, the resources I had and, and, and uh, throughout this whole process has been awesome. awesome and, you know, I'm very fortunate for that. Yeah, I, I love the comparison of you two because you played in the same system. He played it in college. You played yeah. in Franklin's in high school. Yep. Um, and now you're making a transition in the pros. Uh, with that being said, before we let you go, you grew up going to games at Husky Stadium. Yeah. Your career in a roundabout way ended up at Husky Stadium. I can remember yeah. the last throw you made and so many in between. What do you want to tell the Husky faithful as you transition to the league? You know, it was a dream come true. Um, you know, the state of Washington it holds a special place in my heart. It's my, it's my home state. Lake Stevens, my hometown, and the University of Washington was, was right in my backyard. So, you know, it was a dream come true going out there and, and playing for the dogs. You know, I, you know I, I always tell people this last season was, was a season where I was able to come out of my shell and, and you know, whenever we scored a big play or, you know, the, the fans go crazy. I was able to celebrate, you know, it's my home, you know, it's, it's where I grew up. So it was really special for me to go out there and, and play in front of that devoted fan base and go get some wins. So, you know, I, I, I love the Huskies. I'll always be a Husky and, and, you know, I'm super proud of that and super proud of those guys that, that are, that are uh, getting drafted today and, and, and still have waiting to get their names called. You know, I know Nick just got picked up by the Browns. I called him a second ago and congratulated him. That's a big time, big time get for the Browns. He's a hell of a player. And, you know, it's just been super awesome. Coach Peterson, Jimmy Lake, Bush Hamden, the whole staff, and um, even, you know, Coach Saha in the weight room. You know, so many guys in that building that were so, so awesome for me in my transition from Georgia that, you know, ultimately got me to this stage. So, 
you know, very fortunate to have learned from those guys and been a part of that great organization. And, you know, it's awesome to always be a dog.